and there is liberty. I don't know about you, but I feel free this morning. Just because I made it to church this morning, I feel free. I thank God for liberty this morning. I thank God that I'm free to praise, I'm free to worship, free to lift my hands, free to shout this morning. Anybody feel free this morning? You want to feel free. God has set you free. He has made you free. He's allowed you into his presence in the tabernacle one more time. Can somebody say, Lord, thank you for freedom. Somebody say, thank you for your spirit. God, we bless you. Let's go before the Lord. God, we bless you on this morning. We want you to have your way in this room, God. We want you to move by your power and move by your spirit, Lord God. Turn lives around on today, God. Men broken hearts on today, God. Heal, set free, and deliver like only you can, God. And we'll forever glorify you. We'll forever lift you up. We'll forever magnify your name. Your name is above all names, God. And we're so thankful that we're in your presence on this morning. Hallelujah to the Most High God. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the provider of every need. Hallelujah to the way out of no way. Hallelujah. Oh, he's our God. He's our Savior. And we lift him and we magnify him this morning. Somebody just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless him in this place. We bless him in this room. I don't want to do nothing without his spirit. I don't want to do nothing out of his presence. For where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. And there is freedom. So we ask for his presence. We ask for his spirit. We ask for his anointing this morning. Let us worship him. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know what? Sing with us. Sing. Lord, we need your spirit. Lord, we need your spirit now. Lord, we need your spirit now. Nothing can replace or ever substitute for your strength and power. Lord, we need Say we need your anointing. 
situations and some problems is going to try to take your song away. But I want somebody to say, as long as I am breathing, come on.
nobody listening but you. Hey, yes I will. Oh, I'll dance like this, nobody watching but you. Yeah. I'll worship with my last breath. Give my all to live.
second. And let's just praise him because he put us back together again. Let's praise him because you were distracted. And he refocused you. Come on. Mine was all over the place. But he refocused you. And Lord, before we ask for another house, before we ask for another car, before we ask for an increase on our job, today, we want you to refocus us. We want you to refocus us. We want you to put us back together again. I want you to take the next 45 seconds and lift your hands and open your mouth and give God a praise for the refocus. Come on, 30 seconds, repurpose us. And because of that, we lift our hands to a holy God. And we say to you, Jehovah, we praise you. We praise your name. I don't know why, but you keep on doing great things for me. So today we praise you. I don't want nothing from you today, but I just want to worship you. And I praise your name. Thank you. I praise your name. Come on. Come on, we praise you. We praise you. Come on. Come on, we're good at the dance, but I just want to worship right here. Come on. I dare you to lift your hands and just worship him. Jehovah, we praise your name. We love you today, Jehovah. We honor you, we adore you, we exalt you. We make your name great today. Come on, come on, 30 more seconds. Come on. Come on. We praise you. Come on. Come on, can we tap into that worship and set the atmosphere for the word of God, Jehovah? We praise you. Praise your name. Come on. Come on. His name is high. Come on. Can you make his name high in the sanctuary? Can you make his name great? Jehovah, Jehovah God. We praise you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I've been here way too long. 
people. Y'all not saying nothing. And now it's time to cross over. I need about 45 of you to open your mouth and give God praise because he's a bridge. He got me over. I praise him because he got me all the way over. I praise him because I started love. But he got me over. That's how when you cross a bridge, many times you gotta pay for it. You don't know the cost of this oil. Some of you have an easy pass. Some of you got to pay cash. But if you cross over, you better believe that you paid for it. And I need a believer right here to praise God for the bridge. I got over. Hey, I said I got over. I didn't even want to get over. But he got me over.
like this much more longer. Won't be like this too much longer. Listen, I want to raise a tithe and an offering, but I am a product of being carried over a bridge. Listen, have your seats. Let's thank God for the angel of this house and his ashes. Let's thank God for our bishop, Bishop Hezekiah Walker. Come on, let's thank God for the man of God. Thank him for being. Come on, let's thank God for our pastor. Thank him for his absence and all of those that are here that he's left in charge. Listen, it's tithing and offering time. If it is your week to tithe, I'm going to ask that you stand with me. It's always a blessing to tithe.
this morning with an expectation that God was going to bless me indeed. I woke up with an expectation that I got to be blessed. You can't serve God all this time and he not bless you. You can't trust him all this time and he not bless you. You can't serve him and prefer others and he not bless you. Not just your time, but it is your your turn. If you know that you've sown a righteous seed, I want you to put your hands together all over the sanctuary and let's give the Lord a praise. Oh Lord, bless me indeed. Listen, it's time for the word of God. How can we hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? I want you to stand to your feet all over the sanctuary and let's give honor and reverence to this gift that God has given to us. He could have gave him to anybody else, but he gave him to us. And we are privileged that in the absence of our bishop, he is here to stand and deliver the word of God. Why don't you put your hands together and give God praise for Overseer Emmanuel Clay. Come on, can we give God praise? Thank you. Can we bless God in this place? Come on, give God praise. Come on, if your focus is still Him, you ought to bless Him. Come on. Come on, Jesus, you are my focus. My attention is driven to you. It is in you that I live, I move, and I have my being. Without you, I could not be. Without you, I could not survive. I could not make it. I'd be like a ship without a sail. So we thank God for his presence in this place. Can we give God praise for his presence in this place? Can we bless God, amen, for our bishop one more time? I know we've done it already. Amen. I, I want to pray, amen. We got a news flash this morning concerning one of our pastors, and we want to make sure that we cover him in prayer. Amen. Our pastor, Ashley Taylor, amen, over in London. Amen. I don't know if you know, but his wife, and his newborn daughter, amen, his wife gave birth, amen, yesterday, I believe. If y'all can turn it down just a little, there's a little echo, amen. And in the midst, amen, of her delivery, amen, she, amen, left us for a little bit. And she is, amen, recovered since, and she's still alive. Amen. Come on. That's a reason to give God praise. Amen. But her and her, her newborn child is still in intensive care unit. Amen. And I saw, amen, I didn't get a personal text. And sometimes you don't need a personal text, amen, when you see, amen, signs of of. of of transformation and, and change needed. And so I want us to pray right now. I want us to pray and, and I need I need all of our believers here. I, I'm going to lead the prayer, but I need you to pray with me. Amen. The Bible says one can chase a thousand, but two can chase 10,000 to flight. And amen. I want us to pray in such a way that heaven is felt that over in London, God is God is not restricted to location. Oh, he's not just the God of a bridge, but he's the God of the airwaves. So we pray now that God would heal and deliver and set free. Amen. Amen. Pastor Taylor, his family, his wife, Tunzi, I believe her name is, and his daughter, Zoe. It's important to name names. God has given us names for a specific reason. Amen. And, and if, if you don't mind, I know, amen, the time, I, my time is, is limited, but I want us to hold the time for a second because we need to pray. Let us all pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Oh God, we come before you right now on behalf of our pastor Ashley Taylor over in London, England. We pray, God, that you would be with him now, God. But more importantly, Father, we pray for his wife right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for his newborn daughter, Zoe, God. We declare by your stripes they are healed, God. And whatever ailment, whatever interruption, whatever distraction that is taking place right now in the name of Jesus, we interrupt the interrupter. We distract the distraction. We bombard heaven on their behalf right now in the name of Jesus. God, we call down fire we call down glory we call down healing right now in the name of even as you did it for Jerry's daughter Lord God and as you Lord God caused Lord God the woman Lord God that was Lord God called that summoned the prophet that as her baby lied dead God we call forth your power right now in the name of Jesus God go over to that hospital God go into the intensive care unit right now in the name of Jesus oh God and God God, you know their location. You know the address, God. God, even as you declare Lazarus to come alive, God, we declare right now in the name of Jesus. We speak to Tootsie right now. We speak to Zoe Taylor right now. In the name of Jesus, God, arise and awaken their spirit, God, because of your stripes, God, because of your healing virtue, God. Let it be felt from heaven now. Dispatch healing angels in the name of Jesus. We come against death, God. We come against sin, God. We come against ailments, God. And we release your kingdom, God, to do what it's meant to do, uh, to be a healing God. Your word declares, Jesus, that healing is the children's bread, God. And we sup from this healing. We pull from this healing. We declare your healing, God. God. There's a work and an assignment, God, over their life right now. But we declare right now that they go forth the unconscious state, God, that they lie in right now. God, you speak to their spirit and you cause it to awaken, God. You cause it to stand up, God. You cause it to come alive now. God, according to their predestination, we call them forth in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we call for the healing balm of Gilead. Somebody open up your mouth and give God praise. We declare it now. We declare it now. We declare it now. By his stripes, they are healed. By his stripes, they are healed. By his stripes, they are healed. Clap your hands for healing. Don't be stingy with it. Come on, don't be stingy with it. Clap your hands for them right now. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, kingdom church. That's what the kingdom is for. We take it a rest right now. We make it subject to the mind of Christ now. We bring it captive to the thought of Christ. In him is there is no death. In him there is no sickness. In him there is no disease. God, we don't know the diagnosis, but we know that you're a healer. You're a healer, you're a healer, you're a healer. Come on, you want to pray like that? Like that's your mother. You want to pray like that's your sister. You want to pray like that's your daughter. You want to pray like that's your family. Glory to God on my son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Oh, come on. I believe there's somebody in London online. Release healing over there. Release deliverance over there. Release a kobosha, a move of God. This will not be a distraction. This will not be an interruption in the flow of God's power. But this will be a sign and a wonder. God, we thank you for the witness. 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 Oh, glory, glory, glory. Oh, glory, glory, glory. We send the praise. And we send this prayer in Jesus' name. Now release your praise. Let the prayer you pray be governed on the airwaves through the praise we give it now. We release a praise unto you, God. A praise that says we believe. 
whatsoever we declare, it shall be done. It will be done. We await the witness. We await the testimony of a healing, of a sign and of a wonder. Somebody give God a praise. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 For glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. And it is so. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Glory to God. So shall it be here on earth. Somebody just declare, so shall it be. As it is in heaven, so shall it be. Here in, if you need healing, you better praise him for it. Glory to God. God is an ICU interrupter. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. I praise him for the report. I praise him for the report. I praise him for the report. I pra See, that's what praise is. Praise is the in-between from what you declare to what is manifested. That's what praise is. Praise is the sailor. Praise is the continuation. It's the transition of my prayer to my manifestation. I'm praising him all the way through till I hear otherwise, till I see otherwise. It shall be done. Glory to God. If you anticipate a great expectation because of your prayer, you ought to give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. Oh, I can imagine the burden and the weight that is on that father, that is on that husband, that is on that man. We're going to continue to pray for him. Amen. Prayers have not just started. We've been praying since we got the news. Amen. So if you follow Pastor Taylor, amen, on Instagram or Facebook, he posts, amen, amen, the dilemma. But we know God to be a turnaround. Come on, the whole shut up. Come on, the whole shut The one thing I like, the one thing I like about what he posted his salutation and the leaving of the thought that he left was because and because God is the greatest hey God, I wish I had a kingdom church just for about a second and because God is the greatest power we shall not we will I just need about 20 people to release a praise right now for me. glory to God Anybody ever been in ICU and God brought you out? Whoa! Pastor Taylor, he so, he so affectionately talks about the move of God that is over here that he commander that he witnessed I just need just for about 30 seconds and I, I, I gotta give you what God gave me but for just about two minutes I'm not going I'm not going to butter it up with 30 seconds for about two minutes I just need some bona fide believers that don't mind giving God praise for our brother because you believe the manifestation of healing I just need you to give God praise with me just for about two minutes just for about two minutes I need y'all to play like we in a high praise glory to God just two minutes. Just two minutes. Pastor Taylor, this praise is for what you are about to report. This praise is for the manifestation of the healing, of the deliverance of your wife and your daughter. 
God don't need to be warmed up. The moment he hears your cry, thank God he ain't got to be warmed up by my praise. But the moment I call him, he's our prayer answering God. He told Daniel, before you called me, before you cried to me, I knew what you needed, and I gave the way, and I made the provision. Trust God with you. He will not fail. Oh, anybody ever been healed? Anybody ever been healed? Whether you were in the hospital or whether you were in bed at home, to whatever extent that you needed healing, if you know God to be a healer, somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory! Somebody get out! Get out of yourself and give God a loud praise. God, you're a healer. You are a healer. You are a healer. You are a healer. Oh, yes he is. Yes he is. Yes he is. Yes he. God boasts. You bragging on him. God's get, God gets bigger when you brag on him. He's a healer. He's my healer. He's my way maker. Make him big. Make him big. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Take your Bibles out. Go with me. Hallelujah. 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 Second Peter, the first chapter. We're going to start at the third verse. And we're going to conclude at the ninth verse. Glory to God. God is shaking up dead things. Hallelujah. Second Peter, the first chapter. The third verse starts with this. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. I ask that everyone stand to your feet in reverence to the word of God. What God is about to speak over your life, you better stand and hear it. This is the reading of the word of the Lord, the third verse. His divine power has granted to us all things, somebody say all things, that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for if these qualities are yours and are increasing they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these 
qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. I want to lift up that 8 verse and it says, for if these qualities are yours, if these qualities are yours, and are increasing if the qualities are yours you have them in seizure you possess them and you increase them they keep you from being ineffective another version says barren or idle and or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you. I don't have a lot of time, but I want to talk to you for the next few minutes. Advance in pursuit of promise. 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 Take your seat. The stage is set here by understanding that this word of the Lord is given to the apostle Peter. Peter now is very significant because he is not only the one that proclaims or speaks at the inauguration of the, the advancement of the church on the day of Pentecost, but he is that one that has now been given the responsibility to initiate what God told him in the revelation that he received of Christ. Jesus asked, who do men say I am? And all of them came up with all of the prophets and, and all of the men of old, but Peter, he is the one that said, uh, uh, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, and upon Upon that revelation, Jesus understood that there was a responsible, capable vessel in the earth to cause the church to come about. You see, Jesus is about motivation. Jesus is about motion. He needs to know that I can catch or tap into someone that has a vehicular mindset, that has a mindset to move and to drive forward. Jesus understands that the only fuel that can drive you is revelation, is illumination. That's where we get the scripture where it says that he is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. You see, what motivates you when you walk in the kingdom Kingdom is being ever present and understanding that as God leads you he shows you where he's going to lead you he directs your path according to the word of God that he impregnates you with so that you can live to see the promise this is why Peter says here in this third verse that everything you're ever going to need God gave it to you Anything that, amen, is, is, is a scribe, amen, to life and to godliness according to his knowledge. So you've got to know him in order to have a life and you've definitely got to know him to be godly. So when you have him and you know him, you can fulfill what he calls you to do. Now the stage is set here because Peter now is... So Peter is ministering by way of letter to the people of God that are in Babylon. When you read 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, he is now talking to the church about the 18th verse. He says, I write to you in Babylon, but they are not particularly in Babylon. What you've got to understand, allegorically, he is now speaking to them and he is now revealing to him to them them. They are in the same situation that the children of Israel were in when they were captivated by the kings of Babylon and they had to serve them. So what is Babylon now here? Allegorically, Babylon is the place or it is the seat of idolatry and now Peter tells them, you have been set in a place that all around you, a Amen. Sin and carnality is idolized. Secularism is idolized. All other kind of gods 
are idolized. There's a pantheon of religions. There are people that believe in any kind of God. Whatever you need a God to be, there'll be a God for that. But Peter now tells the church, don't worry about all of these other gods. Understand your... you would interrupt every atmosphere that you come into that you would interrupt every sphere excuse me that you would interrupt every region that is idolizing everything but me you've got to understand put some more bass in it please you've got the power to interrupt what is trying to invade the earth you've got power to interrupt these principalities and the powers that be you see the devil wants to be acknowledged through Zeus through Aphrodite through all of the Greek gods they are in Greco Rome now and Peter is writing to them because he wants them to understand that if you have the knowledge of Jesus Christ you'll understand that he is the Alpha and Omega you'll understand that he is the truth you'll understand that he is the life you'll understand that he is the resurrection you'll understand that there is no other power greater than him the knowledge of Christ the knowledge of him, but not just having a knowledge or a cranial or a cerebral knowledge. You see, the problem is we've got cerebral knowledge of Christ, but we don't have spiritual knowledge of him. When you understand spiritual knowledge of him, you will step into a place where Jesus operated. When you look now at Jesus as he steps on the scene, ST, after he comes out of the wilderness, he fulfills the mandate of what Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 61. He is the one now that steps into the place, into the tabernacle, and into the temple. And he steps in there, and they unroll the scroll and give it to the Savior. How is it? It is not by coincidence that Jesus arrives in the temple, and they unroll the scroll, and they ask him to read. He reads this, what we know in Luke 4 and 18 the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach or proclaim the gospel to the poor now he's also has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set the oppressed free this is why God was anointed and this is why God anoints and not only that when when we read the 19th verse the proclamation is this to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord what is the favorable year of the Lord let me hold off now let me slow down now the favorable year of the Lord is nothing without understanding that God is not talking to a oppressed people as we would figure he is not talking to a particular culture he is not talking amen to, to us from a liberation theology he is not talking to us for those that were born in slavery he's not talking to a generation of people that are identified with captivity he's talking about a people that are in bondage to sin he's talking to the whole nation now and he is revealing although Israel was captive in, 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 in Babylon I have come to set you free and whom the son sets free he will be free indeed liberation theology tells us that only those 
that are oppressed from a secular and a cerebral standpoint are affected by the word of God. This is why you got to get away from being locked only into culture. I get it. We want to be pro-black. I get it. I, we want to be pro for us. I get it. We want all that is due to us. I get it that we need to have uh, 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 reparations. I get all of that. But the greatest reparation you will have is when you are set free in Christ. Because the Bible declares whom the Son sets free is free indeed. When you come into the kingdom of God, your focus is not on what the world can offer you, but it is what the cross has given you by birthright so anyone that is an heir or a child of an heir of a legacy anyone that is a child of a king they are not worried about the kingdom as long as they're a child of the king they get the benefits of the kingdom I don't care who tries to seize it I don't care who tries to overtake it because I'm an heir now because I've been bought with the price now I have the heritage of them that believe well tell me how do you believe and no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rise up against me God will condemn why will God condemn every tongue that rises up against me because I am an heir to salvation I am this is the heritage of them that are mine understand God got you covered don't focus on the haters don't focus on what's not don't focus on the devil but set your affections on things above and see the problem that we have is that we are corporately driven we have athletic mentality that we now think from a competitive standpoint. And when you serve the king of kings, there is no competition. Y'all looking at me funny. The problem you don't understand, that God has no adversary. This flesh, we that are in this flesh, we've got the adversary through sin. But when you have been born, y'all looking at me funny, like I'm talking in another language, but maybe perhaps I am. Maybe I'm speaking under the oracles of God. And I need somebody to elevate your thinking and transform your mentality to understand that you are an heir of salvation. And what is salvation? Amen. It is the gospel of salvation that sets you free. Huh. Hmm. So to this end, we understand that as it was in that day, so it is in this time. We are living in an idolatrous society, an idolatrous mentality. Do you not understand that our government is a derivative of the Roman government? Can we take a walk down history? Our councils are, are sheer masks and carbon copies of the councils that were in Rome. Our judicial system flows out of the understanding of what is judicial system there. And so now our government is already set up in that way. But not only that, the day that we live in there are social and political and religious norms that are now functioning and operating to interrupt our mentality and our drive to infuse and disrupt what they are. Jesus came to disrupt the norm. When you see him read the scroll, he reads it and he rolls it back up and he sits down, the Bible says. Why does he sit down? Because he's confident that he that have begun a good work 
is going to perform it. He knows what his word is capable and in process of doing. He knows that it was spoken and written of him that he will come through the bowels of a virgin. He knows that he will come through 42 generations. Amen. From a king that was desolate. From a king that was left out in the cold. You want to know the indif- indication of somebody great? Somebody that goes through a lot. I know you want to know the indication of greatness to be somebody that got a swollen bank account, that got a lot of cars, that got a lot of houses, that got a lot of clout, that got a lot of followers on Instagram. That is not an indication of success. The indication of success is someone that can endure hardship as a good soldier, someone that can stand the test of time, that there was a bear and there was a lion that tried to devour what my father gave me, but because he gave them to me, he gave me the ability and he gave me everything that pertains to life and godliness in him so he won't allow any sheep to be harmed under my watch and when the devourer comes he equips me with weaponry that I can slay the lion that I can slay the bear and I most definitely can slay the uncircumcised Philistine you may not have a giant but you got something standing before you that's trying to inhibit your greatness and the power of God that you know that abides in you to stop it. You have it. You have it. And by the same king, you see, Jesus had to be born through a line of people that were overcomers because he can't be identified with just any kind of people. So he comes now. He interrupts. When you get your time and at your leisure, finish reading the fourth gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter of the gospel of Luke. Because when you read down it, it talks about all of the characteristics all of the hatred, all of the enticement, all of the snares. You wonder why you wrestle with your children. Because if you stand for godliness, there will be interruption that comes into your home. When you stand for God and you tell your son, I know you're smoking weed, but we're not going to tolerate that spirit. I know you're sexing and I know you're doing all of these things and we're not going to tolerate it. It brings a divide. In that fourth chapter, the Bible says that Jesus came not to just bring peace but to bring a sword he came to bring division the problem is you want to get along with everybody you want everybody to like you you want everybody to love you you want everybody to welcome you how much more will they not welcome you that stand for righteousness when you got standards you will not be liked You wonder why they hating on you. It is not the person in particular hating on you. It is the principality. It is the spirit that is active in the earth that is hating on you. It is the fact that the spirit, see, now understand this, that God is outside of time. The enemy and Satan operates and functions in time. So when he see that you have a glimpse of the knowledge of Christ and who you are in him and the power that you have to transform, he's going to arise haters because he's seeing defeat before. You've got to understand he was defeated amen back in Jesus time but even back further he was defeated with Abraham we can go back further he was defeated with Noah you can go back further he was even defeated with Adam. What did he tell Eve? He said your heel shall bruise his head. So whenever the devil gets mad at you he sees a heel and he starts getting interrupted he starts getting frustrated that how is it that these people go through overcoming circumstances that invasion is brought to them but they still can kick up against me they still can overtake me they still can overwhelm me it is not by power neither is it by might but it is by his spirit The problem is even greater than that. Some of us 
or some of you, it is not even the enemy coming against you. It is you coming against you. And you have given credit to the devil for the fact of your lack of discipline. You can't get mad at the FDA because you fat. They have just identified things or factors that make it prevalent that you are what you are. So the antidote is to understand your blood type, understand your bloodline, and to be disciplined by it. And if you don't, if you ignore it, you will only see the results you saw yesterday. I go on the scale every morning. Well, every other morning. My wife asked me if I go to the scale, get on the scale. She told me I get on the scale every day. And I told her, no, I don't. But let me tell you this. For anybody that gets on the scale every day, you get on the scale every day to disappoint yourself because you don't have the discipline to see the results that you want to see when you look down. But if you get down on the thing and not just forget the scale and what it told you you weighed and you start operating and acting against what you see, then you will begin to get the results. So your 30 can become 20 and your 20 can become 10 and your fat can become sleek and your muscles can begin to grow. The problem is we want to see results without putting in the work. I'm talking to myself. And so the devil is not defeating us. We're defeating ourselves, Joe. The devil ain't making you go to McDonald's. He ain't making you order the house special low main. He ain't making you. I See, the problem is, is we misappropriate our senses. And we say, because I smell it, I need to have it. But there's another sense that says, I don't need it. And just because I smell it, it should be ammunition to overcome it. Because if you allow your mind to determine to your body what it should be, then your senses would function, function in the right capacity. And that's why you off in the spirit. Because every time you think God told you that was him, it was your emotions telling you that was him. And you gave your all to him. And when you look up, he was left. He left you for somebody that seemingly looks better than you, but they are not better than you, better than you. So you've got to understand that when you tap into the spirit you will know what the mind of God is but this doesn't start without faith understand faith is the foundation there's three things I want to talk about faith faith is the foundation so you've got to have the knowledge of God understand you've got to be in a place that you understand that you are his workmanship created created in Christ for good works what are the good works? The good works are the things that are going to bring people to Christ. He commissions the disciples. That's the work. Go baptize in my name. And teach men everything that I taught you. That's the work. So everything that you do should be in alignment to the work. Wherever you work, you should be in direct effect of who's working you. You should be fueled by the one that gives you the ability to be on the road or, on, or in the way of the kingdom because you have a knowledge of him. The problem is, is that we are not conscious to who he is. Every day I leave out the house, I say, God, give me a consciousness of you. And when you have a consciousness of God, you won't allow things to distract you. I know that, 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 that girl that walked by, she's got the 36, 28, 36, and brother, you want to turn your head. But the knowledge of God will tell you don't yield yourself to temptation. Amen. I know he is nice and swollen, and you want to just bat your eyes in front of him. But the mind of God says that if you wait on the Lord... 
and be of good courage. He will strengthen you through the things that he has set up for you. And then what you've got to understand too is the mind of God will tell you to be a steward over everything that he gave you. You can't be responsible for what God gave you if you are not functioning under his spirit. The problem that we have is that we're distracted by these carnal things, by the things that are in this realm, by the principalities and the powers that are in activation in the earth. But when we tap into the mind of God, he elevates us above the principalities that we can go through anything. And when there is a situation that comes to overtake us, he will make a way of escape by way of his spirit because God is not going to lead you in a place where you will be overtaken. He will put things on you that seemingly you cannot bear but Ronald God is the God of power and he's not the God that's going to cause you to go down. The God that we serve is the God that wants to multiply you. He's an exponential God. He's not just the God of addition. He's the God that multiplies. He's the God of of, of Abraham he's the God of Isaac and he's the God of Jacob what do you mean by that I'm going to have to get back to this another time but I need to drop this in your spirit Abraham has two sons Isaac has more than two sons Jacob now has 12 sons so whenever you see God moving through his line he is always multiplying but he is multiplying according According to his promise that's why you got to pursue him and as you pursue him you will advance to the promise almost done almost done I told you there are three things that faith does faith the first thing it is the foundation of our existence pertaining to the promise faith it is the foundation. It is the platform that I stand on. Faith is the thing that gets me in the door. It becomes the wind beneath your wings. It becomes the road that you travel. Faith, it's a walk. It's a belief. Understand that faith now is a persuasion of evidence. Faith is now your persuasion of who God is. Your persuasion of his ability and his capability. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. Because those that will come to him must first that he is. Must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But in order for you to seek him you got to acknowledge that he is. And faith becomes the thing. I'll say it one more time. It becomes the foundation of our existence pertaining to. To the promise. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it is impossible to believe God. It is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible. As you function in faith, as you stand on the foundation of your faith, you will begin to advance. But faith alone is not good. I know, I know. I know you, you, you told somebody that all you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. Understand the principle of the mustard seed. Faith starts small. Call my child, but it ends great. Understand that you got to get past mustard seed. And you got to get to the harvest. The problem is we don't want to be responsible for the harvest so we indulge in the seed because we are capable of handling the minor. But when you trust God, you will step into the major. You will step into the overwhelming power of his glory. You will step into the fact that, that when you sow what he gave you that you could handle and when you place little into the hand of the master, he performs much because he's not the God of minuscule. He is a great and mighty God. He is the God of the universe. He expands your thinking. Isaiah says it this way in the 55th chapter. He says, my ways are as high as the heaven is from the earth. My thoughts 
accent your thought. How I think is on a whole different level. Don't try to box me into your 12 years of education, of your 16 years of education, of your 20 years of doctoral study. Don't try to box me in because just when you thought you figured me out, you lost who I really was. And the problem is we don't stand receiving from God because we think that we have arrived from where we left God. But you better take him along the way, everywhere you go. That's why the early church, the first century church, they didn't call it Christianity. They call it the way. They were in the way. So whatever God told them, I'm on my way, God. Whatever God called, I'm on my, I'm in the way. Whatever God wants to do, hit me, overtake me, overwhelm me. I'm in the way. The problem that we have now is that we want to have it our way. And it's not the way. And because he is the way, the truth, and the light, we are in obscurity because there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but it ends in destruction. It says there's a start and there's a finish, but he is alpha and omega. There is no end to God. Hmm. The second thing is, Faith solidifies our placement in God through Christ Jesus by justification. I'm going to say it one more time. Faith, as it graduates, Pastor Nate, Elder Canada, as it graduates now, it solidifies our placement. So what you declare fundamentally God begins to advance you. That's where we get the understanding that we go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, because as you operate in faith, God takes you into another dimension because he can trust you in the last dimension. He can trust you with the last obedience. He can trust you in the sphere that you operated in. And now you can graduate to the next place where he justifies wherever you go and whatever you do. How do you know? Because what happens here is that we've been justified by those that deferred on Christ. Now, in Romans, I don't have the time to go through it, but in Romans, the ninth chapter, Paul gives us an understanding to those that are at the church at Rome that they've been given a privilege and an advantage that was once given to the children of Israel. And he says because they defaulted in it, because they bypassed it, because they were so driven by the law that they missed the spirit of God, now God has provided for us an advantageous place where he's given us mercy now to be named among them. That's the promise. The promise is that we didn't deserve to be called the children of God. You understand what I'm saying? We didn't, we didn't deserve to be called Christians. We don't deserve, but God's mercy provided the privilege to be called an heir. Oh, come on, Sha. An heir. That's the promise. And so the problem that we have is we don't understand what the promise is because we think we save. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart the Lord Jesus and I'm saved. And now I can get any car I want. I can get any house I want. I can have a swollen bank account. I can get the husband that I want. I can get the... No, no, no. It ain't about that. When you understand your real promise, it is to perpetuate what he told Abraham. That I'm going to name you and you're going to be as many as the sand of the sea and, and every nation of the earth is going to bless you and everyone that blesses you will not be cursed but everyone that curses you will be cursed. The promise is this, that you flow in a place where God will direct you, that God will instruct you, that God will infuse in you the ability because he's justified you. It's like when you go, when you go to a, 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 an arena and you go to will call. Amen. Nobody knows who you are, right? But because because there's thousands of people online, you now have the right to walk up to a window and you give them your name and now you get the access and the ability, amen, with privileges to override everybody that's been 
and standing in place. So when you get into the arena, you can be set up in a place that you're comfortable. You can be set up in a place where people's feet are swollen because they were waiting for the doors to open. But because God's name is on you, he gave you the opportunity to name his name and do what he's called you to do because there's an appointed time in the promise where you can rest and enjoy your labor and it's not just heaven it's not just heaven stop waiting for the great beyond to get into glory you do have to suffer but you do have to reign because God's got to be glorified You got to suffer, Ronald. Josh, you got to suffer. Y'all got to, we got to suffer. If you think a seed got to go through dark, why? we are seeds in the earth. The problem is we misappropriate the journey and the process. All we see is end. But the greatest impact of your end is what you learn in the middle. In pursuit, there's always advancement. You got to learn from this step. You got to learn from that step. That's why when you look at measurements, there's intervals. There's increments. You never go from one foot to ten feet. You got to go from one, one and one quarter, one and two quarters, well, one, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, two. Two and a quarter, two and a half, two and three quarters, three. You have to go through every interval. And when you miss the increment, you miss the measure of the ending. The value of the end is displayed by every process that you go through. And so now you can say what I went through, like David in the valley, what I went through on the mountainside, I can account it that I can go through. You see, David fought giants that were bigger than Goliath. Anybody that looks at National Geographic, you know a, a, a bear stands taller than nine feet. But because of incremental progress, he can assess that nine feet ain't nothing to when I fought against a 12-foot, one-ton, big, monstrous being, and I was in his habitat. Woo. See, that's what the power of God will do. It'll give you the ability to function in a habitat that you don't belong to. That's what justification is for. It is for you to step into arenas, Ronald, where nobody knows your name but God. And he begins to whisper in the ears of those that have influence to speak your name. Because it is not by you, but it is by his spirit that he opens up doors, principalities, and powers got to bow to you as you advance. I got to tell you this last, this last point of faith, and then we can move on however we need to recap on this. But there's so much more. Uh, this is the last one. What faith does. It is the fuel and the stimulant of momentum in pursuing promise. It is not just the foundation. It is not just the, the placement of God in Christ Jesus and justification. But now here, it is fuel. Faith becomes your fuel. Faith should make you salivate over what you accomplish in the last sphere of faith. What you overcame before should be fueled that I can overcome it again. Uh, even if it's a different challenge, Pastor Langston, it is the same God that gives me all things that pertain to life and godliness. By this faith, we see the great archives of the fathers of faith because the Bible talks about By, by, by this kind of faith, by this kind of faith, Adam does what he needs to do. By faith, Noah builds the ark. By faith, Abraham and Sarah conceives the child. By faith, Isaac now doesn't become a servant to his brother. By faith now, Jacob 
is transformed to Israel by faith. Joseph goes into Egypt, but he overtakes it by faith. Now Moses leads the children of Israel out of captivity. It is all by faith. And faith has to be the journey. But faith is not just for faith alone. And as I wrap up, somebody play something soft, please. Faith is not just for the sake of you saying, I'm a man of faith. This is the word of faith that we preach. Faith is not a title or a label for you. Faith is the drive for you to pursue the promise. We talk about the promise all the time. We talk about, I'm going to stand in the promise. The promise ain't your house. Your house is an increment in attaining the promise. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. He is the God of provision. He is the God that allows you to go through what you go through. And he builds you. God knows what touches your heart. God knows what you need. God knows what you desire. God knows what will stimulate you to believe him more. But it is time for your stimulation to graduate. It is time for your expectation to transform. It is time for your stimulant to be rectified and brought into maturity. Paul says it this way. When I was a child, I thought as a child. I act like a child. But when I, was a, when I became a man, I put away childish things. You see, the childish mentality tells me I need five cars in my two-car car garage. It is through lateral comparison that we say I need all of these shoes in my closet so I can floss. When you know who you are, you don't need nothing. I can wear the same suit every day. Now, is it wrong to accumulate? No. But there should be a point in your accumulation where you are tapped into the Spirit of God to say that the thing that encouraged me through me getting this, let me bless somebody else. That's what I love about Gerald. He's my friend. His witness is, and I've seen it, he's got a closet full of sneakers. But trust that he ain't got a closet full of 80-year-old sneakers. He ain't even that old. 20-year-old sneakers, 30 year No, when he gets it, he gives it. And that's how you can get more. You see, the promise will become closer when you give from where you are. just talking material things and don't don't stress him now because you know he gives stuff and he don't give cheap stuff because he don't wear cheap stuff if you're going to get something from him you're going to get something that's got value you could, you could trade it in and get some money for it but that's how that's how God wants us to function and promise that what I got that has value I can give it to you like nothing because oh shut up I'm on sick because where I stand, that thing don't mean nothing to me the way it means to you. But I know that if I sow this into your life, it will cause your faith to grow. That you will step into the sphere of where God has called you to. And you will come into a place of promise. This is the last thing. Y'all stand to your feet. I'm going to share this testimony. I, I, I don't want anyone to leave. Deacons, ushers, command the floor. Close the door. Nobody walk. We're all going to lead together in the next 10 minutes. You can just rock with me for 10 minutes. Can y'all put the 10 minute time on? That's the 10 minutes that we out of here. All right? I think I did good within my time. All right? Amen. Thank God. 10 minutes. The testimony is this. I was talking to my wife and to my, my daughter and her husband, my son. And we were talking about the anointing based off of a conversation that the ladies had last week. Can you use the anointing? We begin to deal with that and, you know, talk and we begin to say what we believe and all of this stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what I believe because you need to study and be ready for the next women's call. And I don't want to give you my version. You need to get it revelatorial. 
what God is and can you lose your anointing. But this is the conclusion that I came to within it. My son asked me, are you anointed to be a barber? And I told him, I used to think that I was anointed to be a barber. But I started transforming my thinking because if I'm anointed to be a barber, then I can only function as a barber. But the gift and the promise of God is greater than me cutting hair. The, the barbering is the platform. It is the sphere of influence. It is the place of faith that I'm operating in. Because it took faith for me to build a $60,000 barbershop. It took a lot of faith. It took a lot of work. No, it's not for celebration. It's for the glory of God. It's for people to come into an environment to say, wow, I don't even want a haircut, but I just want to come in here and sit down and feel the presence of God. It started with me being a barber. Barbering was the fundamental, but the anointing or the Spirit of God on my life was for me to set up environments to make people comfortable to give their life to Christ. It was, it is an environment. You see, I thought I was, a, I've been cutting hair over 27 years. I can do it good. I'm blessed by it. But this is only the beginning. So if I think that I'm just anointed for the title, then I will do the tenure for the rest of my life and miss the promise. It is only the doorway of the sphere of the kingdom of God. There are other environments that the Lord has called me to, to influence. This is just the first place of influence. But I've learned that through the years of growing under the tutelage of other mentors and corporations, there is not one job that I've had that I've stayed on the same level with no degree. I have been a regional supervisor, bringing in millions of dollars. But when God anoints you with a Joseph anointing, he will cause you to do exponential things and impact people that you never thought would be able to be impacted by you because you don't have what they say you should have. Now, am I telling you not to get an education? No. I got a whole lot of drama with my life that I don't have it yet. But it's coming. But understand this, that God is the one that gives the ability. I know they told you that your degree opens up doors. But your degree can't open up the door that God has provided. He is the door. God bless you with the discipline. And, and I'm not, I'm, trust me, I'm not speaking against anyone that has a doctorate, a bachelor's, a master's, because I wanted to. But understand, it is God that advances a man. It is why is he going to advance you? Because he needs the promise that he spoke to Abraham to stand up in your life. He needs this world to be filled with people that believe in him. And that people that live in him and move in him and have their being in him. But you've got to be in that place first because you can't bring other people in if you're not the model. God has given you parental rights. I'm speaking prophetically now. Everybody lift your hands. This, this is not just a regular altar call. You that are online, lift your hands. Get up out that bed. Sit up on that couch. Wake up. The advantage that God the advantage that God wants to give you is parental rights to stand in the place and be responsible in maturity to bring other people in to the kingdom of God. The problem that we have with the drips and drabs of people coming into the kingdom is because we have not been mature 
and stood in the promise of God for our life. We've got overwhelmed and enamored with things, with places, with prestige. But that's all an increment in the process. It is a measurement. It is not the full scope of what it is. So I speak and I declare over your life right now, receive this. If you believe it, I speak that God gives you the maturity to stand as a voice. Whether you work in McDonald's, you are not a clerk. You are not a burger flipper. It is an opportunity by way of flipping burgers. If you are a principal, you are the one that can release principles, release people into their destiny. If you are a corporate director, or if you're an average employee, I speak and I declare over your life that you stand in the fulfillment of what God has for you right now. God give you the dreams and the visions to manipulate and to manifest what he has given for you in this increment. This will not be the last place that people will hear your name. This will not be the last place where people will write out a check for you to provide for the vision that is set before you. God wants to trust that you can be a steward of this increment of vision to reveal the promise to the, the body of audience that is before you. God is giving you the capacity and the grace to stand as a righteous man and a righteous woman. Stop going to, to lunch with all them girls if you're a married man. It ain't funny. I'm talking to somebody in here or somebody out there. Stop entertaining those conversations. They want to hear your voice because there's a word in your mouth. And if you keep speaking that stupidity, you're going to lose the soul that God has assigned to you. Why are you clapping? Your hands should be raised. Receive this. Don't applaud it. Receive it. This is how the kingdom will be advanced. Peter tells them, you are in an area of idolatry, but you are now transforming the social norms, the spiritual norms, the environmental norms, because you're intruding and you're speaking the kingdom of God that comes to disrupt everything that is before you. Father, we bless you now. I thank you for these, your children. Release your power your anointing. Release your spirit now in this place and online to every man, woman, boy, and girl that needs to step into the place where your word declares. Creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. I declare that the manifestation of the sons of God step into their rightful place by right or by way of maturity and righteousness that you declare and become what you need to be that you become the answer to people's questions that you become the healing you become the healing of ailments that you become the fiscal means in poverty that you shift the working of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus today is the acceptable year of the Lord God has now deputized you to rescue men. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you and he has anointed you to preach good news, glad tidings, the gospel, to heal the sick, to remove the oppressed, to transform the poor. Are they poor? Externally, no. They're poor spiritually. They lack swollen. They are malnourished. Society is awaiting your voice. And I declare right now by the power of God that as you step into the place he's called you to, you will be the answer. You will be the way because you will direct people to the answer and to the way. In 
Jesus' name. Lift your hands a little high and open up your mouth. Y'all can come. I'll build my house on your worship. I'll build this house on your worship. I'm going to stay. I'm going to hold my shelter. I'm going to stay right here. You can build your house on my worship. I stay right here where I'm welcome. You can build your home on my worship. I'll stay. I'll stay right here. I'm going to stay here, Jesus. I'm going to stay in promise. I'm sorry, God. I don't want to come to church another day and then be regular. I want to feel the presence of God. But I don't want to just be in here. I want to take it where I am. You can build your house on my worship. Wherever I go, I am the house of God. This is what the church is. We are the pillar grounds of truth. When you go to your your home, you go in truth. I'm going to remain focused on you. God, redirect my focus. I know I told you all 10 minutes. I want to open this opportunity for somebody. Keep it low. Somebody that's online, I know y'all still got your hands. You can put your hands down. But if you feel the presence of the Lord, you can lift them and open your mouth and speak to him. But I want to invite somebody now. Perhaps you're trying to attain success. And the success is not the promise. Success is on the way to promise. But when you, when you tap into Christ, when you tap into Jesus, when you tap into his lordship, he will bring the kingdom on earth to advance his kingdom. And when your will becomes one with his will, he will cause all of the frustration in your mind, all of the mental anguish in your life, all of the disruption and the trauma that you've been experiencing have only been to gather your attention to Christ. He is the only one that can lift the burden and destroy the yoke. And if you would just oblige me just for a minute, repeat this prayer for me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died for my sins. I believe that you went and are seated at the right hand of God. I believe your word where it says, as your kingdom is in heaven, it shall also be on earth. I release myself, Lord, to be your servant, to take over my life. You can build Hold on one second. There's a, oh, come on. There's an opportunity to praise. We just got a text from Bishop that Lady Taylor woke up out of her coma as the church was praying. Somebody open your mouth and give God a praise.
Anybody here, you don't have a church home? Before we leave, you need to join this church online. Y'all need to put up like you do the tithing and the offering where you can join the church, www.lovefellowship.com. Click on to become a member. God is going to bless you. Lift in your hands. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his majesty to the only wise God. Be majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. I want you to advance in pursuit of the promise. But as you advance, you can build your hope. You can build your home on my words. You may be dismissed. As you're leaving, there's lunch platters in the back. Amen. Even if you would like to support me, amen, I believe our youth and young adults, there's lunch platters in the back. Amen. 